For ages, Jamaicans have been using the phrase, from Wapi, kill Philip, to denote a distant past or an enduring situation. But who were Wapi and Philip? Did they truly exist, or are they merely characters from our romanticized folklore? There are no pictures available for the events in this video, so I will be showing you a street view of the Palisados Road from the Norman Manley International Airport heading in the direction of the Arborview Roundabout, as that is the area which the events took place. So sit back and enjoy the views while I tell you about Wapi and Philip. And if you really enjoy videos like these, please click the like video, as that really does help the channel. A search through the Gleaner archives shed some light on the Wapi and Philip saga, or whether it even occurred. According to the Daily Gleaner articles dated June 13th and 14th, 1951, a man named Aston Jolly, known as Wapi King, committed a violent crime on the night of June 11th. He attacked and robbed two individuals on the Palisados Road, which connects Port Royal to St. Andrew. The research reports that Wapi King brutally assaulted and fatally stabbed one of his victims, leaving the other severely injured. Interestingly, none of the victims were named Philip. It is speculated that the expression Wapi Kill Philip might have evolved from Wapi King Philip, implying that one of the victims met his demise due to Wapi King's action akin to a flick of the finger. But what does this truly signify? A Philip typically refers to a slight, swift movement or a flick often done with the thumb. It can also denote motivation, provocation, encouragement or stimulation. However, none of these definitions sufficiently explains the true meaning behind the term. In an attempt to unravel this mystery, I delved into the Gleaner archives for further research. Unfortunately, my findings failed to shed more light on the term's significance. Nevertheless, it was evident that Jolly's case gained significant attention. The front page of the Daily Gleaner dated June 14, 1951, bore the headline, quote, Rastaman charged with Palisado's murder. End quote. The article highlighted Jolly, a bearded Rastafarian from Dongle, otherwise known as Bakawal, which is now Tivoli Gardens, who faced charges of murdering 19 year old Sidney Garrell, as well as robbery with violence and the rape of 18 year old Bernadette Yu, a witness to Garrell's killing. Bernadette Yu, despite being sick and hospitalized at Kingston Public Hospital, was summoned to identify Jolly at the Crossroads Police Station. Jolly was apprehended in a police dragnet on Salt Lane and detained at Crossroads. Ultimately, Wapi King was found guilty and sentenced on November 12, 1951. He met his fate on April 5, 1952, when he was hanged for his heinous acts. Curiosity then led me to conduct an internet search which uncovered an intriguing explanation for the phrase. One source, a post by Corey Solomon on the House of Arts website dated April 13, 2013, presented a contrasting account to the Gleaner's story. According to Solomon, from Wapikil Philip referred to a shooting murder resulting from a domestic dispute between two brothers, William and Philip, in the parish of Portland during the 1940s. This rare crime made sensational headlines in a local newspaper becoming a noteworthy historical event. The nickname Wapi was attributed to William, while Philip emerged as a corruption of Philip's name. However, Solomon failed to specify which local newspaper reported the incident or the exact date of William's act of violence. Considering the broad time frame of the 1940s, it seems we are delving into the realm of folklore and speculation. It is not uncommon for historical events to undergo transformations as they are retold and shared through oral traditions. Legends and folklore often emerge, weaving tales around real incidents, adding layers of intrigue and mystique. This could be the case with From Wapi Kill Philip, where multiple narratives and interpretations have merged, creating a tapestry of stories that contribute to its enigmatic nature. The search for the definitive meaning behind the phrase is a testament to the human fascination with unraveling mysteries and the connecting with our past. It speaks to our collective desire to understand the origins of cultural expressions and the events that shape them. As the years pass, the true story of Wapi Kill Philip, whether it be an account of Aston Jolly's crime or the fabled tale of the brothers William and Philip, may continue to elude us. However, the significance lies not only in the accuracy of the historical accounts, 
but also in the cultural impact and the resonance the phrase has had within Jamaican society. From Wapikil Philip serves as a reminder of the complexities of language, history and folklore. It represents a vibrant and ever-evolving cultural landscape where stories interweave and transform over time. This enduring expression will likely continue to intrigue and inspire curiosity, encouraging future generations to explore its origins and meaning. In conclusion, the true meaning behind the From Wapikil Philip remains elusive to this day. Its origins and significance continue to be debated, and perhaps may never be fully understood. The phrase has become deeply ingrained in Jamaican culture, passed down through generations, and its true essence has blurred over time. Guys, something I noticed. Speaking to people who were born in the 40s and 50s, they will tell you that they heard this saying from their grandma and grandpa. So, I really don't think this saying is coming from the 1940s or 50s. And not even the 30s. I think it's way before that. If anyone has any idea where this saying originated, please let me know in the comment section down below. And from Wapikil Philip, I'm asking you guys, please do consider subscribing to the channel as that really does help Elite Jamaica. Thank you for watching. I'm on my own, broken along. I feel the rain crashing down. All around this empty town. I'm searching for the lost and found. But you don't care, you're unaware. Keep moving like the scars aren't even there. It's in the air, like a blazing flare.